the new medium of radio would also have a huge impact on Bing Crosby's future. On January 4th, 1928, Paul Whiteman, along with Bing and the Rhythm Boys, took part in the first nationwide NBC radio broadcast to launch the new season of Dodge Cars. Whiteman's success on radio led to a weekly program for Old Gold Cigarettes in February of 1929. Hollywood beckoned, and on May 24, 1929, Old Gold leased a special train to take Whiteman to Hollywood to film The King of Jazz for Universal Pictures. They stopped in every city for a concert, continuing their Tuesday radio show from whatever city they happened to be in. Paul Whiteman reported to Universal on June 24, 1929 to begin filming The King of Jazz, but the script was not ready. The troupe had plenty of time to lounge around Universal's back lot in a special lodge built for their entertainment. If I had a talking picture of you, I would run it every time I felt blue. I would sit there in the gloom of my lonely little room and applaud each time you whispered I love you. Love you on the screen the moment you came in view. We would talk the whole thing over, we do. I would give ten shows a day and a midnight matinee if I had a talking picture of you. Paul bought everyone who wanted one a new Ford so they could get around in Los Angeles. He paid himself back out of their wages. will attempt to present Paul Whiteman's initiation into the Hollywood Breakfast Club, where ham meet eggs. And for his part in the ceremony, Max Sennett will administer the platter of sizzling ham and hen food. We will now blindfold Mr. Whiteman. Now a Hollywood celebrity, Paul Whiteman was inducted into the Hollywood Breakfast Club. Max Sennett is next to Whiteman holding the ham and eggs. Bing was not present at the affair. Senate and Crosby were destined to meet eight months later. As soon as the Rhythm Boys reached Hollywood, they tried to get into the movies. They began a two-reel comedy for Pathé that would eventually be released in August 1930 as Two Plus Fours. Bing is rumored to have made a screen test for MGM at this time. On July 3rd, 1929, the Rhythm Boys opened a six-week run at the Montmartre Café. No use of debating about your style. <laughs> A rising young starlet at Fox, Dixie Lee, came to the Momart and met Bing for the first time. Here is Dixie singing, I Apologize, from the Vitaphone short, Darn Tootin', released on December 8th, 1931. If I made you blue, I've had hot eggs too. Now I beg of you, won't you forgive me?
Outside of the weekly Tuesday radio broadcast, Whiteman's band had little to do but collect their checks and attend Hollywood parties. This spare time backfired when two bandsmen were in a car accident on the way to a picnic on July 31st. Joe Venuti was badly injured and Mario Perry was killed. Three days later, Al Rinker's sister, Mildred Bailey, hosted a commemorative party in her Los Angeles home. At the party, Mildred sang, What can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? Paul discovered Mildred and hired her on the spot to join his band. She became the first female vocalist to sing with a major orchestra. Still waiting on the movie, Whiteman took his troupe back to New York for engagements from August through October. Bing bunked with Hoagie Carmichael on the train trip east, while Mildred Bailey roomed with Harry Barris on the road. Vic Spiderbeck had become sicker and left the Whiteman troupe at this point in time, never to return. Once I built a railroad, I made it run, made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done, brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower, up to the sun, brick and rivet and lime. Once I built a tower, now it's done, brother. Can you spare a dime? Filming of The King of Jazz finally began on November 8, 1929 and finished in February 1930. It was now an all Technicolor review film and one of the most expensive to date. The Rhythm Boys sang a few bars of Mississippi Mud and When the Bluebirds and Blackbirds Got Together. They also sang in the larger production numbers of Happy Feet and A Bench in the Park. began uh, your movie career on a rather tenuous basis. As I remember, this picture was the king of jazz, yeah. and uh, something happened on the way to the set. <laughs> well, have uh, done for, I think you're speaking of something that happened on the way from the party. Oh, from the party, yeah. yeah. We were larking about yeah. the bandsmen in those days. Uh, we had lots of time to ourselves, and uh, I got a, a few drinks in me, and I was taking a young lady home, and uh, fella hit me from behind and forward I was in the Chevrolet and she fell out of the car and I took her in that Roosevelt Hotel to minister to her injuries and the police came by and they said you've been drinking and I said yes and they locked me up mm -hmm. uh, actually that fella hit me with was, was drunker than I was I, oh. didn't, I didn't think I was drunk I just <laughs> had enough uh, composure to carry the lady into the hotel and called the, the ambulance and mm -hmm. so forth but they said you had been drinking, and I said yes, and the same thing occurred in the courtroom two weeks later. The judge said, uh, you, uh, the complaint here said you uh, had been drinking. I said yes. He said, don't you know there's a prohibition law? I said, well, nobody pays much attention to it. He said, well, you'll have 30 days to pay a lot of attention to it. Clang. Went well, the, went the door. So there I was. Didn't that sort of cut you out of the picture? No, I, we, uh, I got moved out to Hollywood the last part of my term, and... Uh, White was able to arrange to have a policeman bring me out to set every day, but I did miss a solo, uh, uh, Song, of the Song of the Dawn or something, John Bull sang. The dawn is breaking, and a new day is born. The world is singing the song of the dawn. Birds are waking, hear them welcome. Oh, 